bars to the place, to the place. Thanks for the helping hand, Rod. Yeah, well, I don't know why we had to go camping anyway. Like, this place is dead. Yeah, well, so is this. Look, it's not a normal Friday night. George is back from the Imperial University of something or other, and I don't want him to think that we spent the last year doing what we always do. Pretty sure there's a Met in there somewhere. Whatever. The point is, we show George we're still interesting, even though we don't go around in a cap and gown quoting Shakespeare. OK, so you have a slightly warped view of higher education. Like you'd know better. I've seen The Graduate. Well done, Mrs Robinson. Here he comes. Be interesting. Thanks. It's warm. Um, bring those twigs, Rod. So how's film school? Oh, God, it's great. I'm working my way through the French new wave at the moment. Hey, they let you film any of those uh, kung fu malarkeys yet? No. But I have seen over 12 films by Akira Kurosawa. Cool beans? So, why were the ants crawling on the hand? Was it sticky? No, no. It came from a dream. My hand gets sticky after some dreams. Or something intellectual. Oh, hey, I heard this really scary story in the pub the other day, one of those um, urban legend thingies. Do you want to hear it? As long as it's better than the Xi'an Winnie the Pooh. Underloo. All oh, right, OK, anyway, so there's this girl. She's back from uni for the summer, just, you know, visiting friends or whatever. But tonight, her parents are out of town. So she settles in for a movie and a bubble bath. Seriously? What? Oh, come on. The middle-class white girl, all alone in her parents' big suburban house. Next you'd be telling me she was popping popcorn before hearing a strange noise. What? No. Popcorn, please. In fact, she, she wasn't even in her parents' house. She'd, she'd take her drive to the woods to clear her head. Better. She's still going to take a bath with her, right? Right, so she's sitting alone in her car, minding her own business, thinking about her thigh gap or whatever when suddenly a noise startles her. Hang on. Why would she go to the woods alone? Isn't this just another example of a bimbo willingly placing herself in danger for no other reason than to push the plot forward? No danger of that happening here. All right, fine, she isn't alone. She went there to do over the clothes stuff with her boyfriend. Yeah, better. OK, so they're making out just long enough for BF's blue balls to set in when suddenly a strange noise startles them. You stay here. I'll go check it out. Hang on. The powerless girl has to rely on the hunky guy to protect her. In the 1950s, want their story back. All right, fine. She didn't go there with her boyfriend. She went there with a vegetarian. That postmodern enough for you? Better. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Right. So, off girlfriend goes to see what's what, leaving Blondie behind. After a while, Blondie gets nervous when her lady friend doesn't return. So she decides to do a little investigating of her own. Soon, she comes across some tracks and follows them into the woods. Eventually, she comes across a discarded bracelet of some kind. 
She gasps in horror as she discovers that it belongs to an inmate of the local mental asylum. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not cool. What? What could it possibly be this time? Casting a mentally impaired person as your killer. You're on dangerous ground. <laughs> but that's like a classic within the genre. Actually, I'm with Siskel and Eber on this one. Okay, fine. It wasn't a mental patient's bracelet. It was... It was a bloody handprint. A little generic, but... <laughs> okay, so, scared out of her mind, she runs back to her car. Luckily, girlfriend's waiting for her. Distressed, she tries to tell Lezo number two what she saw in the forest. <coughs> yes? It's just a minor thing. No, come on, let's hear it. What fatal crime have I committed this time? Is it not French New Wave enough for you? Would it help if I asked you to imagine it in black and white? This is the lesbian stuff. You know I'm not homophobic. You saw me kiss Lisa Gardner in year 11 at Patrick Murphy's party. Okay, no offence. Can you tell that story instead? No, it's none of that. It's just... You dropped a body too soon. You need to build the suspense more. Linger on the approaching threat. Then, the kill will seem more satisfying when it does happen. You know... Quite messed up that you know that. So, she runs back to her car. There's no sign of the girlfriend. Suspense, suspense, suspense. And then she hears a rustling coming from the boot. She nervously opens the boot. And bang! There's the dead girlfriend. She's she's about to run. Uh guys, I think we have a problem here. Not now, Rod. So she turns around. And, and there's the killer, looming over her, ready to strike. Okay, I think you two really need to turn around now. <laughs> you guys are crazy! Terrified, she runs off into the woods, the killer chasing after her. No, 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 no! You fall into the trap of setting the girl running off into the deep, dark woods, which is literally the worst place she could possibly hope to find any help. When what she should be doing is screaming her lungs off or running towards the next car full of horny teenagers. Oh my god, what is your problem? Whatever my problem is, it's nothing compared with your inability to tell a story with a logical narrative. Free from the same old genre tropes we've all heard a thousand times. Well, maybe we've heard them a thousand times because people enjoy them. Not everyone has to suck the joy out of a good story. Well, did they not teach you that in film school? Were you too busy tracking the flight of a feather with your iPhone? Seriously, an axe murderer. Do you realise how redundant that role is? I know, right? I mean, if you're gonna go down that road, at least commit. Maybe throw in some bloodied overalls or something? <laughs> really? A blunt instrument? What are we, playing Cluedo now? <laughs> yeah, it was Colonel Mustard at the campsite with the spanner. <laughs> uh, better. better. Up, make me cry, but I'd die if you said goodbye.